Welcome to this special broadcast for our electronic exams Q&A. We are just loading up now. And we've got Wendy, Catherine, and Ray back with us. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. And we have a few people trickling in right now. And oh. as you are, um, just hang tight with us. We'll just let the group um, fill in a little bit, and then we'll we'll get going. Um, Ray was just mentioning that she is on a tour of local chapters talking about 2023 code updates. How's that going, Ray? It's going good so far. We're uh, we're talking about the changes we're going to have with E and M. So a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Okay. Lots more changes. There were a lot last year, weren't there? Yep. Now there... we're level set. Now we're level setting. So now instead of having three sets of guidelines, we're just going to have the coding guidelines for E and M. Yeah. We're not going to have to worry about years anymore. So bravo. Meaning the ninety five, ninety seven stuff. <laughs> this oh. is historical. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's the history in the making right here. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Seems like there's lots of history in the making lately, huh? A lot. Yeah. A lot of history. Seems, it's good though. I it history in the making. Yeah. I I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It's it's time to make some changes and I don't know. Feel good. Well, our industry good about that always, actually. Yeah, our industry is always changing. So if yeah. we don't keep up with innovation, we're gonna be in trouble. So welcome to healthcare. We have to keep running the whole time. <laughs> Well, you guys, I just shared this in the AAPC general Facebook group. Uh, I have someone who has, I have no idea what this is. It might be spammed, so I don't feel good about it. So it's gone. Um, <laughs> Are they asking questions? What's going no. on? Tell no, me this, about it. This is uh, an odd link. Okay, yeah, no. Some don't. We all learned in our security yes. training here at AAPC no odd links should be followed send yes. that directly to security <laughs> i think i think maybe alex our it department is testing your abilities to follow our security protocol yes because that one time i clicked the link and uh... <laughs> oh it was you then huh we know now well it said i won i said i was the big winner come on well that is i would have clicked too oh <laughs> That's, like, that's like the people who show up for the free TV and get arrested. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just so everybody, we have almost 100 people um, watching right now. Um, oh. We are about to kick off our electronic exam q and I'm just cleaning up the comments real quick, everybody. I see um, Kiana from New York. Hey, um, Kiana. We always see her. She's awesome. Uh, Kelly Oliver has joined us. Uh, and we are we are excited for what's happening um as i continue to clean up the comments just real quick um, as you guys know and, and ray knows this that i love i'll take any opportunity to share a message so the message oh, no. <laughs> yes well the message today just before we kick off kick this off is um is that free aapc is still going strong i i know many of you have seen the great offers that are going on with it um, we launched another big contest today. It's Instagram specific. And basically all we're asking is that you to share a video on your Instagram account, uh, why you love your career in, as a medical coder in healthcare, um, a minute video. There's some hashtags that you need to post in there. And basically, I think it'd just be awesome for you to share from your heart. So those who may be interested or on the fence about the career might uh, get some advice and encouragement about why it may be a good path for them. I've loved watching the Instagram. I think it was on Instagram about the different um, Home offices. offices. That's awesome. I love that. The coder's crib. Is yeah. that coder's about? crib. Coder's yeah. Crib. <laughs> hey, Wendy, you know why I like being a coder? Why? Because of all the changes in our industry. <laughs> Well, you know, one thing that you can definitely feel, and, and you get this, whether you're going to any local chapter meeting, conferences, anywhere that members come together, 
they are very enthusiastic and passionate about what they do. Yes. And, you know, I remember being asked one time um, by people that teach in high school about how to get how to get young people interested in this profession because it just doesn't seem cool. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What's not cool about this industry? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it, and it does take that enthusiasm to keep going too. I think once you get into it and you start digging and you start, it's like being an investigator. It's like, just, you find different things, you know, that you never knew you learn every day, which is, awesome i think mm -hmm. all so. right hey guys we've got um we've got it cleared up so uh if you have questions go ahead and drop them in the comments and i know um you guys may be watching too i, I know Catherine usually kind of sits in on the comments are you watching as well i Catherine. was trying to bring that up inconspicuously so yes i am okay so Catherine, you're going to have to teach me how to do that i've not Same. mastered that skill. a whole yeah. nother screen and I log in as a member. And there's a there's a 20 uh, second delay, so they kind of come in a little bit after um, we yeah. talk about something. But to, just to kick this off, here here are a few questions. Uh, well, there are two questions that caught my eye in the Facebook group, and maybe we can just start with those, and we can see what other questions come in in the comments. First, since the CPC will now be one long four hour exam instead of broken into two parts. How will bathroom breaks be handled? Let's get to the very important stuff first. So Alex, Most important. I want to, I want to, I'm going to turn it over to either Wendy or Catherine can give you more of the technical answer, but it's not a long four hours. It's the shortened four hours. Yeah, so Alex. It's how yes. yes. you Perspective. think about it. <laughs> it actually is only four hours, which, um, four hours seems like a long time but when you're going through that exam do you know how many people have made comments on their grids that said i was thinking five hours and 40 minutes would be so long and i looked down and i was almost out of time so you know four hours goes by pretty quick when you're digging in and being the investigator of that but with the bathroom questions we just like at the local chapter you can take a bathroom break um as you would like um, the clock does not stop as like with the local chapters. Um, the only thing that really changes with the um, electronic exam is that you have to let the proctor know that you're going to take a bathroom break. The, the camera in will stay on. The time will um, tick. You can go to the restroom. Once you come back, that proctor is going to ask you to do a room scan one more time just to make sure that um, everything still looks good and is and it is appropriate. And once once that's done, you can just go right back into taking the exam. So it really is. If it's actually a little bit better, I think, because with the local chapter exams, you have to go up the stairs, down the elevator, and into a room, you, or you don't know where it is, or or you're you're you know rushing to get there. At least with the restroom at your house or where you're taking the exam, you know right where it is, you can go get your business done and come back and, and you know just do a quick room scan. That's one big thing that I want to really push on, on the electronic exams is know how to use your webcam. Um, even I, when I was trying to do it, I was like, I didn't know where to put everything and I was, I, I couldn't see and I did, you know, I was like, can you see this? And it was just really confusing. So practice, practice, practice. You can do a search down in your computer and hit camera and that will show you what your camera looks like looks like when you're sitting there which is why you know I always have a nice background because I know exactly where my camera is gonna sit so make sure everything's clean right here <laughs> yes well so. th this addresses the question from uh, I'm gonna try this name La Muneca um, who says how about break so bathroom breaks other breaks that it's all wrapped into that and um, of course, cheating, and you address that by there will be another scan. Yes. But I think examinees need to realize that if you take many breaks, if you take one break, that takes time away yeah. from your exam. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, um, we don't really say take as many breaks as you need. Personally, I would take one break if needed, and then I would keep it at that because maybe two breaks if, if 
you know, you've drank a lot of coffee that day or something, but I would honestly, because it does take some time and the proctor's going to ask you to do those things, you know, to view that. So I would just make sure you're ready to take the exam when you sit down. You've, I've seen a lot of, uh, of questions where the proctor, they ask the proctor, can I go to the restroom before I start? Let's make sure that we're ready to begin the exam when we sit down. Yes. And we've talked about webcams. Um, so someone asks, is one or two cameras needed? I'm just going to kind of handle a couple of these questions. So it does require a camera, Rachel. Um, Wendy asks, is it one or two cameras? And it's just one. Yes, it has to be an external webcam. So it can't be your laptop webcam. It has to be one that can move around and do your 360. It can be placed, for example, more than likely, it's going to have to be placed somewhere like this so that we can see your laptop or your keyboard, your hands and your face. So you'll have to make sure, again, that you're practicing that and making sure that you know exactly where it's placed so that you can see um, a, maybe a side view of your eye, like where you would be placed right here and you can see your books and everything. And the reason for that too, I just want to clarify yes. to give people the the reason why we are requiring that. Because some of the comments that I've seen is that when people are taking a college course, their laptop webcam suffices. Now, because we have an open book exam and because we need to see what you're utilizing on your workstation, that's why the external cam is so important for our particular exam. We understand other exams where you don't need to use resources. If it's just a computer-based exam that needs no resources, you can be a little bit more lenient on the type of camera being utilized. But because we have a high stake exam that allows materials to be used, we have to see the materials being used and that you're not using anything else. Right. All of our procedures are not to be difficult. They are to be 100% secure. And that's the only reason why we do that. I would like to touch on one of the things that Ray talked about, the resources. We do still allow you to bring in your code books. However, in these exams, we have, if there are other PDFs that you're allowed currently in an in-person exam, for example, the CPCO has the compliance guidance that you're allowed to print and bring in. Instead of doing that online, we actually provided those PDFs for you in the exam uh, engine. So you were able to look at those without having to print them off and bring them in. So there are some resources that are not allowed on the electronics exams anymore and are allowed in in person and that just means that we have a way to provide that for you instead of eliminating you from being able to use it yeah e and m guidelines um that's in within the exam correct mm -hmm. um the e and m audit worksheet um for that's one of them that currently have it in print we have allowed it on the electronic exams and we've provided that for them yes good Okay, someone's asking about uh, or for recommendations on webcams. Do we offer that? And any comments about what kind of webcam? Obviously, external webcam. Wendy, try yeah. to do that. So in your confirmation, we give you some specs on what type of webcam is best. Um, honestly, I've heard a lot of comments that they're kind of spendy. I actually bought my webcam for $22. Um, when my webcam broke, I went to the neighbor's house and said, hey, can I use your webcam? I know your son's going to school and my webcam's broke and I need to do a Zoom meeting. And with these webcams, they're plug and play. So you just, you don't have to upload or download or do anything really specific. So if you have to go borrow your neighbors or your teacher or somebody, all you have to do is plug it in. So, you know, it's really easy to get um, and they are, they're, they're fairly inexpensive. Um, nowadays, we use them for everything. I'm sure your kids will have them. Your grandkids will have them. Heck, my dog probably knows how to use them. So, you know, it's any, any more, you know, having those webcams are really a good investment, not only for school and for taking this exam, but for jobs coming ahead. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. We have a lot of questions. So I'm going to try to move this uh, quickly. Um, what happens if someone loses their internet connection during the exam, how will that be handled? 
So with the internet connection being lost, you need to make sure that you're we rec highly recommend that you're plugged into the Ethernet. If your if your webcam or if your internet goes down, then you can connect back to the proctor. The proctor will use their e the email or a cell phone number to contact you back, and your exam will go at a paused status. It will stay at a paused status for. Um, I think 24 hours. So within 24 hours, you can connect back to a proctor and get back onto that exam. Now, if your internet goes down for more than 24 hours, we've pretty much lost that exam. The data does not stay in there. At that point, you would need to contact AAPC and we could see what we could do. But you can also contact Scantron and Examity as well for any kind of internet help that is needed. You can reach out to them. Okay, um, I think this next one, Catherine, it may be for you. Michelle Tulier asks, will all three federal registered be included as a PDF in the electronic exam? In the demo, I only saw one fed register. We will provide all three in the CPCO, which is the one that it's currently allowed in right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Lori asked about the breaks and cheating. We covered that. Um, Stacy, oh, hold on. I am just going through. Any difference? In taking the exams outside of the U.S., so what we're talking about right now is exclusive to the U.S. Um, Ray, tell us about international um, briefly, if you want. Mind. So, um, international, specific in India, um, we are going to be rolling out that program and sharing details about that soon. Um, we in in with our partners, we have access to test centers that have electronic exams. So in our our India members will be eligible to go to those test sites and take the exams there. Online live remote proctoring is not available in that region. In some countries, we do allow the live remote proctoring at this time as well as in the U.S. So there's going to be variations based on geographic limitations that were dealt with. Um, so the best thing that I can say is uh, keep, keep your eyes open for our next announcement. And because we have variations in different countries, that exam confirmation that Wendy was talking about is so important because that's where you'll be able to see specifics that apply to your region. Thank you for that clarification, All right. Kelly Oliver asks, notes on paper, this was um, a discussion in the group um, and we brought up how no, there is a note um, uh, I don't feel yeah um, a section in the, on the exam and the exam portal um, someone says it's not the same as being able to write and scribble and to take notes that's not computer based but we are exclusively we are taking away the pen and paper and you have to take notes in the exam portal can you guys explain that for us Catherine do you want to take that one so there is actually a notepad in the exam portal, portal where you can type in your notes and um, they stay there. And uh, we also have the ability to highlight cases um, or text within cases to be able to highlight important information within those cases as you're trying to go through and code those. So we have provided a way for you to be able to take notes. Now, yeah. I just want to comment on the paper based going away. So. Um, through 2023, paper-based exams will still be available in the U.S. with our local chapters and education partners who are qualified for proctoring. In 2024, our intent is to be fully electronic, and the proctoring options will be at a test center that has computers where an exam can be taken, or live remote proctoring from your home. So there will always be an option of whether you want to take it in your home or not. For those of you that are afraid of that internet stability and some of the other things that have been brought up, the reason why moving to an electronic format is so important is it, give us, it gives us the flexibility of alternate test items, meaning that we're not stuck with just a multiple choice based exam. We have other ways of delivering um, 
test questions and testing competencies. And not only that, but the speed of grading, the flexibility, the security involved with being able to switch out items and make sure that our exam stays extremely secure. That's our number one goal with the move to electronic. And, so, and also actually with that in mind, I'll really quickly say we all are going to have to get to use, get used to using electronic versions of everything. Everything is going that direction. So the quicker we, we learn how to take notes or highlight, I'm one of them agreed, but I still, still have my paper and pencil here with scribbles all over it, but but the quicker I learn and we learn to do that, the better off we're all going to be anyway. So. so this question has come up in the group and we're talking about the digital revolution, um, the e-books, e-code books. Are they allowed in the exam? Not currently. Okay. <laughs> you heard it from them too. I can go with it. <laughs> I was waiting for that one to come up. Those two said it. <laughs> so I would just say, you know, we get this question a lot. You know, one of the things that we take a lot of care with here at AAPC is making sure that any changes that we make to exams is going to maintain security and maintain our test outcomes. And that's why we do so much analytics. I mean, Catherine lives her life in analytics of our exams. Um, we don't want to make a wrong move. But with that said, we also want to get in the times with technology. And if most people are using electronic code lookup tools and, and electronic ebooks, you know, that gives us the flexibility of containing everything in the test platform and not allowing items in that don't belong. So there's a lot of good reasoning behind using ebooks. We're not there yet, but it is something that we are doing testing on to see um, if and how we can implement that. Christy Bishop asks, I can't sit for long periods of time due to a medical condition. Can I stand from time to time? How will those ADA type issues be handled for online or electronic exams? So good. That's a great question. Um, the ADA process pretty much stays the same. Best thing to do is, is apply for any of those ADA um, needs that you specifically need. There will be there's documentation on our website that you can go through and figure out what needs to be submitted like a doctor's note and that type of information, then you'll get approved for your ADA and get the exam and we can get pretty much any kind I'm that is the the best thing one of the best things about electronic exams is large font exams not needed enlarge the fonts on your computer standing up stand up you're not you're not embarrassed you're not bugging anybody you're standing up the proctor is aware of that it's going to happen um uh what's another one being in the room alone because of anxiety that that is you know a huge thing you're at your house you're at your location you're comfortable you're with your surroundings ada is awesome right now so all right. Um, about monitor, someone's asking, uh, Karen Peterson says, can I use an external monitor instead of a laptop monitor? Monitor, And in that same light, um, Elitris Drayton says, can I use a bigger monitor during the tests? So monitors are not allowed. External monitors are not allowed. Um, you have to use your laptop monitor or your um, uh PC desktop monitor. So you can't have any monitors that are attached to your laptop. Again, that's for security purposes. Um, you would need to use your top to have that with your external webcam. And they will make you turn all in, e excuse me, that's even if you close your laptop and use your monitor, you cannot do that. It has to be one screen and it has to be on your laptop monitor or your desktop monitor. Okay. So a good, a good piece of advice there is when you're doing your practice test, when you're taking your practice test to do those on your one monitor and not using your external screen. Yeah. Because you it is mm -hmm. difficult to not carry. <laughs> I, I know I'm one of those that has a wall of monitors across my desk so that I can have many documents open at a time. Um, so it's something you need to be prepared for. Yes. So I would advise doing the studying and taking your exams on that one monitor. Yep. 
Someone was asking uh, uh, just back to the local chapters and their involvement with exams and seeing that uh, exams will not be held through chapters um, after 2023. They're worried about um, the funding because they rely on that money. Um, but we do have other things in it that will be coming to help support them. Is that right, Ray? Yeah, that is right. I mean, we've said from the very beginning when we started talking about this, and this was also a concern during COVID, um, is we truly believe in local chapters and want to support them in their mission in their local areas. So different programs will be rolled out, giving them the opportunity to fund local chapters to do the important work that they do. That is dedication that AEPC has had and will always have. So all I can say is know that it might look a little bit different, but there will be revenue generating opportunities for local chapters to be sustained. Um, Shanita uh, asks, is an online exam simulator available? Like, so I guess I'm going to write to practice exams practice. is what I'm thinking. So Thanks. with the practice exams, they, they still emulate the exam content. They are not going to emulate the exam experience right now. Um, that is something that is going to take us some time to prepare and get ready, but there also is a video that you can watch that there's a link on our website and there's a link, I think, in your confirmations that is a video that kind of shows you how to maneuver through that. Um, stay tuned for that as well. Check back on that because I have intentions on making that kind of a, a big thing on how to um, maneuver through through that exam, but it does give you some good snippets there. But content, yes, it absolutely emulates those practice exams, emulates that exam. I can't tell you over the years how many people have said that has been a great asset for them to take that exam. So okay. uh, Angel Kendall asks, schools who have educational partnerships with AAPC, is there a plan in place to, to for authorized testing centers for students to test or how will that work? So with our partner, um, part of their process is having certified proctors. So I'm not saying that it's impossible. It's just not on the plan right now. As we go through the next year, there might be opportunities to look for partners. If we need supplements and locations where we have limitation on testing centers through our partner that we're already working with. Um, so can't give a definitive answer yet, just can say that it's not in the plans right now, but there might be opportunity depending on the situation. I want to share this comment. It's, uh, uh, it's just a great comment. I just want to say again how grateful personally I am for this online availability for all exams. It's just epic. Lillian Green, thank you so much. It was a huge effort by this team, these three um, ladies here who have led this effort. Yeah, um, I am just going to throw it out there that I, I do have, I am working through the transfer list of transferring from an in-person to an electronic version, and I am tickled pink that a lot of them are not just CPCs. There, a lot of them are the CPMA, the CPCO, the CEMC, the all of the specialties. I was- I'm so excited about I it. I know, I was pleasantly surprised when I type in which one it is and it's like, ah. so this is awesome. It's, a, I mean, honestly, we have been working on this online for Catherine, probably what, four, five years? I mean, before COVID, we were working on this. So I'm super duper excited. I'm just going to um, read through. I'm seeing a lot of similar questions like Melissa Knight asked about if you lose power. We addressed that earlier, um, Melissa. Um, so you can go back as this recording will live on uh, the Facebook page. You can go back and watch. Um, yes, lady, the in-person exam or the in-person exam is going to transition to 100% online. 
online on, in 2024. Electronic. I just yes. want to make sure that we clarify that. It's an electronic exam, but proctoring options will be available in a testing center or live remote proctoring. We are not requiring everyone to take this exam in their home. That is not the plan. So I just right. want to make sure that we don't mix up online from electronic and, and the reason why we're trying to make that distinction. Uh, Karen Hill says, how are in-person exams going to work once tests are no longer paper? Do we have to bring our laptops in so you do them at home? Or a test center that or has all of the all of the computers set up. You basically yes. make an appointment with the test center. You go in. Um, they go through the proctor process there. So it's not a requirement to take it on your own equipment if you take it through a test center. It, it's very similar to taking a test at your local college where they require proctoring, where you go in and they have the systems already set up and you walk in and sign in and they check your books and you take your exam and there's a person watching. And just to be clear, in 2024, it will not be held at any local chapters. It will be either the testing center or an electronic version from your home like we are doing now with proctors watching. Stephanie asks, can we use EM audit sheets? So we have the EM audit sheets built into the system for you. Um, you will use the highlighting ability to be able to take those, but they are built in and provided when needed and within the exams. Um, Lori yes, about the revenue for chapters. We've spoken to that. Um, chapters are so critical to APC. Yes. So we will make sure they are taken care of, having had have other opportunities um, to earn uh, um, earn to sustain their chapters. Um, back to paper. Um, no, if you're watching this and you're asking about whiteboards or paper, um, you will not be able to use those in the exam. There, there is a note taking function um, in the exam um, in the exam por portal. There will not be any papers, pens, any writing material at all available for you to use at the, uh, the electronic exam. Don't bring them, don't have them near you. It just solves a lot of problems with the proctor if you just don't even have them. So the only thing you should have is a drink and your books. And if you're taking an exam that requires a calculator, that's provided as well. Right. Okay. So we've had many hundreds, I don't know, thousands of people transitioning from um, in person to online exams. How long, when someone has uh, put in that request, how long will it take for that to take effect in their APC account? So that is what we are tasked on doing right now. Um, right now, we have about 800 people that we have to transfer vouchers over to. Yay! I mean, it's a lot of work, but we're excited. So that should be finished and completed by the end of this week, the first of next week. Okay. And then those come through every day, and we will be able to do those within three to five days. So we're getting a new tool that will help us to be able to do it a lot quicker too, so. All right, and I'm going to ask those who are watching, I know many of you know a lot of these answers. So if you wouldn't mind help um, helping answer some of the questions that are coming through, because at this point, there's no way, we're gonna have to do like five, two hour sessions to get to all of these questions. It's, it's great, I love the enthusiasm. Uh, many for, uh, many of these answers, Alex, are found in our frequently asked questions. If you scroll yeah. down about halfway through the page, there's a whole section on electronic exams. Um, for example, talking about what resources they can take in, we have every bit of that outlined in those frequently asked questions. The um, type of systems that are used, there's a link that you can click on to make sure that your system qualifies for the speed or other requirements that are needed to take the exam. So I, I highly recommend that uh, you visit our frequently asked questions for the electronic exams. And that's a really good point yeah. because I'm gonna say those FAQs, everyone out there, I'm gonna give you a, a um, comparison that you can relate to. Not reading those FAQs is like trying to implement a code change without reading your coding guidelines. We saw a lot of people making speculation or misunderstanding or misinformation because they bypassed the FAQs and just started talking about the concept. 
a lot of time went into drafting those FAQs so that we could think of all of these variations to give to empower you with knowledge. So please read the FAQs. And I know that the confirmations have a lot of information in it and a lot of links. Take the time to do it. It will resolve a lot of issues when you're taking a lot of stress issues. You will be calm, you'll be ready, and you'll be prepared. Read, read, read. I promise we did. If it were up to me, it would be really short, but we want it to be informative. We want you to have everything you need to be able to be comfortable taking these, and that's what we've provided. And they're ever-changing, so read them. Every time you get a confirmation, read them. Great. Lynette asks, Probably the most asked question in the Facebook group about grading timelines. So we usually say seven to 10 business days. Will that, will that change with electronic exams? So currently we are sticking with the seven to 10 business days. Um, as Ray mentioned, we're running a ton of analytic reports. We are looking at these exams daily and we want to make sure that when we release those scores, the scores are what they should be. So we do still have a pause on when that exam grade is released. Okay. And won't you be pleasantly surprised when you receive it earlier? <laughs> yes. You never know. It's like receiving something in the mail. Remember all <laughs> the old people that... <laughs> For those of us that got to wait six weeks to get that certification yeah. or the results of our exam. Yeah. yeah. Journey asks, can a retake be converted to an online exam option? Absolutely. Fill out that form, send it in, we'll, we'll get to trade it over. Um, with that being said, if you're scheduled for an exam in the next two weeks or two or three, three weeks prior to when you submit a change, you will need to continue taking that in-person exam. So let's say, for example, you have an exam scheduled right now for October 1st. You send in the thing to be changed. We will change the retake to an electronic version and keep you scheduled into the exam for October 1st. Um, if, if you do not want to take that exam on October 1st, put it in the notes of, of your changing and you'll, you'll need to pay the $100 cancellation fee. Remember, 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 our local chapters are so important. They still have secured your seat for that exam. Um, we, you know, we have to make sure that we are still putting all the love to our local chapters for now with them securing those seats for you and nobody else can take it if you secure it and don't show up. Right. Lindsay asked you, you need to have your AAPC ID card available. For the electronic exam, you do not. You do, however, have to make sure that your name matches exactly on your government ID with what your confirmation says. So if my confirmation says um, my middle name is Delilah and I go by Delilah, in, fee in, in, my, in my account it says Delilah Willis, but my um, my driver's license says Wendy Delilah Willis. It needs to make sure that in that confirmation or the salutation says Wendy Willis. If it does not state exactly what it says on my government ID, then you need to call AAPC ASAP and get it changed so that we can make sure that there's no stopping. So you just have to have a government ID that matches. Okay. Donna Lyons asks, can I keep my in-person exam in December as an in-person? Absolutely. Um, in-person exams oh, yeah. that are on the website are um, open for your registration for seats. Um, you can do that through 2023. Catherine, I know I see you looking at the comments. Do you see anything? Yeah, I do. I see your eyes. Or you're reading something really good. I am. I am. <laughs> She's multitasking. I can <laughs> She's good at that. Do you, I mean, there's one talking about uh, candidates using notes that they're using electronic manuals, and, and we're not allowing electronic manuals at this time. So their notes will still be on the notepad, just like everyone else, and you're going to use paper manuals. So um Okay. 
Um, how will book checks be done in the electronic and online exams? This is from Bev Stover and Bev won our free our HealthCon registration and um, hotel through our last contest. She played the guitar and sang. I just have to throw that out, Bev. I remember, that was awesome. Yes. Um, any thoughts or comments about that, the book checks? Yes, actually, that is another thing that you'll want to watch and be prepared for. The proctor is going to ask you to hold your book by the spine. They're going to ask you, and you would hold it just like this, and you would go, you would flip through it slowly, not just flipping through it. You will pick it up by the spine. Yes, they're big, but you will slowly flip through it like this. That way they can see if there's any, they may ask you to open it up and do it like this, but be prepared to show the inside of your books on all three of them. And you have to have either 2021 or 2022 books. You cannot have both sets. You can only have one set of books. Yes, you can have a 2021 HICPIX and a 2022 CPT and ICD-10. You can have that, but you will only have three books on your desk for most exams. And, same. and you still have the you still have the additional resources allowed for the specialty exams. Um, and and if you go back to those frequently asked questions, we do have a link to what's allowed in the exams, and it's split out between paper and electronic exams. So yes. if you think you want to bring something in and you're not sure, refer to that. It has everything listed out. Yep. That, and it's pretty. Um, and it's very very pretty. Our marketing <laughs> department did a fabulous job with that. I love it. Um, and uh but that that's the place you want to go those frequently asked i know i keep referring to that but we really have spent a great deal of time trying to anticipate the questions and provide answers for you okay um i see a few questions about testing centers how do you find a testing center and right now that is just through our local exam chapter. locating yeah local chapters um and then janie asked how do we as a school get signed up to become a testing center when we move down that path? So right now it would have to be through our partner. Um, we're not securing direct testing centers. These uh, sites have been located and qualified by our partner and anyone proctoring for them has a uh, proctoring certification. Believe it or not, folks, there is a certification for proctoring. So they would not qualify schools on their own unless they're already a partner with Scantron as an approved test center, would we be working with directly at this particular time? Okay. Yeah. Nicole. So at this time, you cannot, you cannot become a proctoring facility. All right, but that is coming at some point. Not necessarily. It's going to depend. There's is um, Measure Learning. They just changed their name. So Measure, they have hundreds of sites across the country that have been approved that have the technology and the security needed to be able to host our exam on their plat on their computers. They also have gone through a certification program for their proctors to properly proctor exams. So those are the two qualifications. The only way we would look outside for other um, optional facilities would be if there's an area that's underserved, then we can look to, okay, what would we need to do to add test centers? That's something that they're committed to us to make sure that we have availability across the country where we need it. Yeah. I'm going to go back to earlier in the discussion. Um, there, there was a lengthy discussion in the group about cheating and could someone actually uh, get pulled, pull it off by taking multiple bathroom breaks and, and things like that. Um, and there are a lot of different opinions in that. Um, how, how do we ensure that um, that we maintain the um, the exams competency and and reputation. 
I can just say the analyst, I'm not going to go into specifics on how we're doing it because I don't want someone to try to figure out to cheat our system. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say in the electronic environment, we have tools available to us that we don't have in the paper exam. And the way that the data is scrutinized and the videoing of what's going on, um, we feel is a secure method of exam delivery. Uh, Catherine and Wendy, I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that. Yeah, we have been, we, that is something that we review on a daily basis, um, sometimes hourly. Um, it's going to be difficult for somebody to do that. And, and we have a team of people that are involved in yep. reviewing this. It's not one person making the decision. And we are yep. um, constantly, constantly reviewing the analytics and finding um, uh, potential issues that we need to look at. And, but, but we are very, very confident that our exams and our exam content yep. is secure. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Danielle Abraham asks, I joined late. Why no whiteboards on the exam? Um, Danielle, it's because we have a note ticking tool in the exam um, portal. Um, so you no longer will need that. You can just do it there. Shanita, and it is slick. It's is awesome. It? Yep. It really is usable. And cool. you see that in the video that we give on how yeah. to maneuver through the exam. So if you want to see what that looks like, I would suggest you guys looking at the video because we, we wanted you to see how that would work. Okay. Shanita's comment or question is what makes AAPC so great. She says, can members volunteer to proctor online exams? And it's I love that it's our membership who love supporting other members future members and future professionals. It's awesome. Thanks for that comment and question, Shanita. Shanita. Um, I would imagine that no, our members cannot, no. No, not because it's because of the, the proctor um, training and the proctor certification. And, you know, we can take that back that we've gotten feedback on members wanting to be involved in it. Um, but I can tell you at this time, it's not our plan. Okay. All right, Catherine, are you seeing anything catching your eye on your end? The flurry has slowed. It has. One of the questions I think I saw earlier is what the deadline was for the two sittings for one exam versus one sitting. And I believe they will only be able to take that through September 30th, right, Wendy? Oh, the two different parts of the exam. Mm -hmm. the, the individuals that have not taken have only taken one part have until the end of September to take that. If you have a voucher that you still have that you still need to take part one and part two, fill out the form, let's get you transferred over because that is locked down to nobody can register further for a full exam. Again, if you have only taken one part of the exam and still need to take the second part, you need to get in there and make sure you take it by the end of September. If you have an exam that's part one and part two that's scheduled beyond September 30th, we will be contacting you, canceling that exam and putting you over to the new system and, and you can register going forward for that. So we will cancel you out after September. And I just want to uh, provide a little why for that as well. When we had to get CPC up and available electronically, in the very quickest imaginable time in order to um, meet exam needs during COVID, the longest that is industry recommended for an electronic proctored exam is four hours. So that was the reason why we had to split CPC into two parts. It wasn't optimal, but it was the only way that we could make it available to our members electronically. Now that we've gone through the process of item reduction and we've gotten down to the four hours, that's what allows us to do it in one exam sitting. And that's the reason why, even if you were already intended to take an electronic exam, there's a reason for the shift into the new system starting October 1st. And, and, I, and just, just a plug for the white paper that walks through that entire yeah. process. <laughs> the analytics that you do you think? To get there in case you're going to spend a little bit of time on that white paper. <laughs> it is awesome. It it is an eye opener document. I was amazed and 
Catherine is my hero because I was like, I don't know how you write something like that, but it is very, very informative and very easy to look to read. Somebody that doesn't know anything about that kind of stuff, it was very easy to read. Um, and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you will love this new electronic version platform so much better than what was the than the splitting it up into two it seems like it's going to be longer because it's one sitting but it is awesome it's slick it's easy to read it's easy to follow it 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 is a very good platform we've also taken great lengths to make sure that somebody taking the exam online does not have a benefit over those taking it on paper um and yeah. that the uh you're you still have the ability to do the same things that you do on paper you can highlight you just have to do it electronically you can go back and forth between sections you can you can actually flag a question to go back Which is to easier. It later. you can answer a question and you can go back and change that question and submit it later um so there there's a lot of the navigation that you can do with a paper exam that you can also do with the electronic version we had a comment uh, from Danielle just asking about uh, will the four hour exam be for both in person and online? Yes, um, they, the, the only benefit, I guess, of being at home is being at home and not having to travel to an exam site. Well, no snow, then, no rain, no. And no bubble sheets. That's one uh, of the things that we've heard people say is that you know marking it on the computer and moving on and not having to worry to go back to get the bubble sheet filled in is is also another benefit of taking it electronically yep uh lisa boyd asks uh she she says i may have missed this but she's scheduled for her cpma on december 3rd um it will not transfer to an online you're still scheduled to be in person so if you have a an exam scheduled for um, for in person right now, that will continue until you request to transfer to online. So if you if you don't want to, if you want to want to take it in person, just stick with what you have and you're good. Yep. Um, Diana Bell asked about ADA accommodations. We we spoke about that a little bit earlier. Um, Diana, um, she asked, is there or where's the request form and information? Um, where can that be found on the website? It's under certification, and I believe it's just before you go into where you're going to schedule or locate an exam. But you can always do a search on our website, and it will pull it up there as well. Okay. I usually when it's I a want, link. Uh, this might sound silly. I when I, when I look for when I want to find something specific on the APC website, I do AAPC and Google AAPC comma. <laughs> ADA um, form or whatever, and that usually pops it up right away. Yeah, well, you can also find it right in our search on our website, Alex. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes Google is not your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> we have more BFFs now. <laughs> hey, uh, Brenda asks, I bought two exams. I only had the option of scheduling one. The other exam didn't show as an option. Do I need to call and make sure I have access to both exams? Okay, so if you're electronic, um, at, so let's say you said, I want to take my exam electronically. We transferred your vouchers over to the electronic version. You can only schedule for one exam at a time. Once you receive a, a grade, the, you can then it will then send you another confirmation that says you can schedule again. So you do have the two options and they do show on your website. You, however, you can only schedule for one at a time, which benefits you as well, because you definitely don't want to schedule two exams back to back and not know what your scores are, because then you just wasted four hours when you probably passed your first one. So. Hey, our friend Missy Kirshner says this. It's not a question. It's a statement. She would she says, I would say quote unquote there was a there was a white paper about this and she says but Catherine might hurt me <laughs> hey missy glad you yes there was this. a white paper <laughs> yes there was a white paper and it, it i is. believe it's still available on our website for those of it you is. that have not taken the time to go read it it really has some great information about why these decisions have been made and the information that we pulled and the statistics and the data to support the decisions that have been made 
and the fabulous reliability of our exams. Yes. Is it called optimize exams? Is it that one or is it white paper on? I think it's white paper on the website. So you can search that white paper. All right. Um, Danielle, she just is going back to um, exam, exam time. Yes, Danielle, it is four hours in one sitting. So it is online anyways. It, it was broken up into two parts. That is no longer the case. One sitting. Yep. Um, Journey asks, when will when will electronic exams uh, be available in the UAE or internationally? We spoke about that a little bit. Ray, you want to touch on that real quick? I mean, just in, in geographic locations, there might be variations. So we're referring people back to their exam confirmations. We've also sent out email communication to our entire membership um, based on where they are and what this change means for them. Um, Don Gill asks, can she take her exam on a MacBook? Does it matter what type of computer or is it web based? Yeah, you can. You obviously can't take it on, on an iPad or a, is it a Chromebook, I think. But yes, a Mac computer can be used. Yes, they absolutely support that. And again, that's in our FAQs that um, the information regarding what kind of systems you can use, what kind of webcams you can use. Um, FAQs, and I believe it's in our confirmations as well. Okay. Yeah, we have five minutes. We're going to hit these real quick. Um, Alitra says, if I pay for two exams and don't like the online version, can I do the second attempt in person? We would prefer that you call us if you don't like it and let us know how we can help you. I am always here to make sure that I can guide you guys on what's most uncomfortable comfortable but it does get extremely confusing and manual to change back and forth so if you've made the decision to go online or electronic we'll keep you at the electronic version okay um vanya asks how many can we flag i'm guessing questions how many can we flag in four in a four hour exam if you want to flag 10 questions can we do more than that yes you yeah. can flag as many as you want just not too many that you can't go back to yeah, that could be a double-edged sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like uh, it is on paper. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Margarita asks, is the practice exams available online? Is the same practice exams that we've always had as far as the platform, Catherine? Yes, we still have the same practice exams that we had before. It's not in the same exam engines that our electronic exams are, um, but they are online, yes. Lindsay asks, is it easy? Sorry, everybody, for being so speedy, just trying to get through all of this. Yep. Um, Lindsay asks, is it easy uh, online to know if a question was skipped? Does it not let you move on? Does it remind you that at the end that you have incomplete questions? So it shows a flag and it shows you, it reminds you that you have flags and you are able to go back and forth between questions. You are able to go back and forth between sections and you are able, even if you submit an answer, you can go back and change your answer and submit it to a different one. Uh, Unless you run out of time. Unless you run out of time. <laughs> Jenny Granger asks, are the online exam slash proctoring being administered via a different party such as Examity? Yes, Examity is our proctor, our, um, Live remote. Live remote proctors, correct. Okay. Uh, Darcy asks, can, can a classroom be a place where a student could come to take the electronic proctored exam? So, no. They would have um, to be in a room of their own. So there would they would only be they would have to be the only one in the room. It couldn't be in a group setting. So if they have like a private room to allow a student to come into, that would be okay. But they have to be the only one in the room. Uh, and know that sometimes the schools do have sketchy internet. So, you know, you you take, I, people are thinking if I go right to the school, then I'm going to be okay. But that I've seen some that have had internet issues as well. So just make sure you're checking your internet speed. Okay. I'm going to just take a few more questions and then we're going to stop. And then if you have more questions or if we didn't answer anything in this uh, webcast, you can message AAPC Alex but, on Facebook. Yeah. But before you message, read, read, read. you better have read the FAQ. <laughs> yes. And the white yeah. paper. And the white paper. Don't forget the white paper. 
this is just a joke, but to put it in, in terms, yes. if you ask us a question that's handled in the FAQs, we're going to start deducting CEUs from your bank. We're not <laughs> your Part B, only, just B, kidding. Just only kidding. B ones. I, I would never do that. I'm just saying <laughs> there's so many questions can be answered there. Yes, yes. Uh, Separate keyboard and mouse. Can you do that? Just plug in your USB. Yes, you can. They will. They will check underneath your keyboard, and they will do all that. So yes, you can have that, which is the benefit of having the webcam towards you, so they can see everything. Okay. Great. Thank you, Wendy. Okay. We're gonna stop right there. Wow. That went. Whirlwind. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you for your patience, everybody watching. And thank you, Wendy, Catherine, and Ray. That was, so I have to say, when it, the questions first started coming through, I thought there's no way we're going to make it answering all, because they were like, we're behind like 60 questions at one time. <laughs> and, but then we're at the half hour mark and we, I think we found a lot of similarities, similar um, themes and, and questions. So we hope we were able to answer everybody's questions. Um, Ray, I think you summed it up perfectly, and we'll just say it again. Read the FAQs that are in the, they are in the certification page, and uh, that will that will have probably most of this information that we've spoken about today. Yep, exactly. And emails that were sent out as well. Look for them on in your junk mail. If you've deleted them, go back and find them. There's lots of information. You... If you didn't get the email, it could very well be because you've asked to unsubscribe to us. So you want to go in and check your member profile and make sure that you are subscribed so that you can get important information like this from us. I know you might not be interested in some of the marketing emails, but you also it, you also limit yourself of getting very important information from us. And make sure your profile information is updated, your address, your emails, your phone numbers, your names, everything is updated. Super important. And I'm just going to plug the APC general Facebook group, just the APC Facebook group is such a great resource where I know many of you watching are in there and these questions are going to come up so you can refer people to this video again it will live on the apc facebook page i'll also make a few little edits and post it up on um on our youtube channel and i'll put the audio on our podcast so if you're a podcaster you can check out the aapc podcast and it'll be put there um and i think that wraps it up you guys so thank you everybody for watching we hope this was helpful um, Wendy, Catherine, and Ray. Ray, you have a great tour. What chapter are you headed to next? Uh, I'm going to, so I was in Jefferson City, Missouri today. That was a great group. And I'm going to seat over New Hampshire for Friday. All right. Well, have a great trip. Thanks. And I'll see the three of you later. See everybody else next week on APC Social Hour. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.